Aaron, what's up? What's up? Hey, how we doing? We're coming up on our three year anniversary. Can I get some threes in the chat? Three, 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 three years of hacking. And I couldn't be more excited. You're going to see me well up with tears. I'm such an em empath. I'm so sensitive, but man, it's just been a, you got to think, you got to think about this. The stories that we can tell, the memories we've shared, we needed each other during that time. Remember that time when we were all out of a job, when we didn't have anything to do, when we were sitting there? Remember when we were just, I remember sitting there just bored to tears, no gigs. I hate to bring up even that word. I just don't even want to talk about that phase of our lives, but that's really what Create Hackers came from. And to see where it evolved from, just me being absolutely bored with nothing to do because I had no job. And then to see it evolve into people realizing that we had a fun, healthy discussion about something that is actually good for our lives. It goes so much deeper than music organization. If I could go beyond Cray Hackers, I would. Someday, maybe I can. But there's a philosophy of you don't have to take everything with you. You don't have to bring it all with you. When you die, you can't bring it all with you. What's the point of having it now? So I've always coined that philosophy if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, touched it, needed it, wanted it, felt it, had it in your hands for a year, just get rid of it. And so I realized that I wasn't the only one feeling the same way. We've met people across the world who feel that music organization is just the tip of the iceberg. Talking about music is just a fun, distracting way of getting that emotion that you need, but also realizing that you got a team of people who love talking about hits and talking about cleaning up, not just their hard drive. It's not the hard drive. If it was, we'd be selling music. If it was, we would be a record pool. This is about cleaning up our lives, really. So let's see what the next few years bring us. But three years, man, come on, we've been at this for a long time. And can I just say that we have, we've been blessed to go beyond our little bubble. Let me take you further back and tell you a story about what my limitations were and how bad I was at certain things. And it ties into tonight's hackathon. But at first, all I was really capable of doing as a radio programmer was delivering crates of pop music, crates of rap music, and EDM. I knew pop music very well because of my upbringing in radio. I loved rap music. Hip hop and R&B was in my blood, but I knew that really well. So I was able to give you good crates on that. EDM, always wanted to be a festival kid. Always wanted to hang out with the ravers. But since I was a radio kid, I wasn't cool to hang out with the hipsters. So I still just appreciated the music. So I was going to go on a path and bring you pop, rap, and EDM. And that was my wheelhouse. That was my limitation. And you want more. As a community, you deserve more. People ask for such a wide variety of crates now. They're asking for things beyond my limitation. I got to call in for some help. And tonight, I'm so excited to introduce a couple people. Courtney, I'm actually quite excited. Courtney, are you with us? Can we, do I have permission? Just really quick, Courtney, are you cool? Can I put you on the screen with me? Miguel, are you with us? Can I put you on screen with me? Yeah, I need host to do that <laughs> if you want to do it. Are you, you want to be host? Yeah, and but I just need some people on screen with me to yep. really and I'll do that. bring the whole family together. There we go. So yeah, here I am in Nashville, Tennessee, limited beyond my beliefs and my capabilities. I need to bring out other resources, other people who can help me out. Miguel Mix, are you with us tonight? There you go. Turn on your cameras. We can have you and. Oh, is Miguel even here tonight? Is, he's here. I saw right. the Miguel Mix. He's, he's here. Miguel all right. Mix. CB, are you with us? I'm here. There we go. Hey, CB, where are you from? What part of the world are you from? Oh, wait. Can everyone hear me now? Yeah? Oh, here there we go. go. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm here, man. I'm here. Sorry. I'm literally... So I'm from the UK, but I'm not staying on too long. It's 1 a.m. in the UK. I'm <laughs> soon to get into bed. I just thought I'd join in and say hello to everyone, but I'll join in on a proper crap hackathon very soon. But yeah, it's nice to meet everyone. Yeah, I hope you're all well. Oh, I know it's really past your bedtime and you got kids. So I just wanted to say thank you because you are a UK representative that we're making plans to expand to. We want to get these crates in all languages and all styles. And Miguel, you've got you got Latin America, quite the responsibility. Yes, um, sir, man. Yes, sir. Thank God. Thank God. Courtney, I know you got a bounce, but everyone give some love to CB. Much love to our friend. In a different time zone across the pond, you'll be hearing more from the UK. 
in our great hackathons. We're so excited. Thanks, man. Drop, but tonight, your, uh, thank drop you. your YouTube thank you. and your IG in the chat real quick before you go. Sorry, what was that? Sorry. Just drop your drop your your YouTube in the chat. We got a lot of people who know exactly who you are and probably want to see more. <laughs> yeah, one second. As we do that, we do have our special guest tonight hanging with us on the screen and uh, not in Latin America currently. Where are you residing from, Miguel? Where are you currently at right now? I'm in Orlando right now, going back between Orlando and New Jersey. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm not too- based from Puerto Rico. I'm the Puerto Rico. <laughs> Man, I have just got to lean on you today. I'm really going to require some assistance because again, my limitations, I obviously need assistance in all points of the globe. Talk to me a little bit before we crack open this crate. Why do you believe that we can get as much knowledge out of you? Why are you with us tonight, Miguel? Uh, first of all, I'm going to do a little bilingual thing. So I know we got some Latino users locked in with us right now. So I'm going to go a little bilingual with this, but I'll translate everything. I do tour the world with so many big artists. I started off as a mobile DJ, just to give you a quick zoom through it. And what can I say? I done open up tours for Bad Bunny, Osuna. I done DJ J Balvin's birthday party. I done been, I done it all. I done did Madison Square Garden, Staples Center, when it used to be Staples Centers. I did the Miami Airlines Arena. I've done the biggest arenas in Puerto Rico. I've rocked crowds, 70,000 people, 50,000 people. And just to throw a little icing on the cake, I was the first reggaeton dj to bring a reggaeton open air festival to switzerland the knowledge is there the knowledge is there and i just only don't focus on what i call reggaeton music but uh, i'm a latin dj what they say but i'm open formatted with it so you're not just getting obviously the topic today we're doing something on reggaeton but i also doing them both bachata salsa and my focus is to bring to crate hackers the hits but mm-hmm. I want to bring the hits that are formatted and is open formatted for everybody to play at a private event, whether it's a radio station, a nightclub, a freaking strip club, whatever the case is, the occasion is, that's what I want to bring to the table. Basically, <laughs> what I, basically what I said was I was brought here to Create Hackers for a mission and for those people in Latino America that want something from Create Hackers is now going to be able to get it and to be promised that it's going to be done A+. plus. I have no doubt about it. Your work ethic astounds me. We've instantly and quickly become good friends over the past couple of weeks. We both have a radio background. And I wanted to ask you, you saw with my history, it was all about learning the charts and radio. And I could always lean on what the Kiss FMs, the Wild FMs were playing yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. When you go down <laughs> to the other, <laughs> past the border, how do you find those hits? Where are charts in... Latin genres? Billboard is big. Okay. I don't follow it all the time, but sometimes I use it as a guiding, as a stepping stool. You know what I mean? It's always good to know what's going on out there. And I've been a person that I've always been on social media a lot. So I'm always watching content from everything. I'm always watching other DJs. I'm watching bigger DJs. I'm watching legends. I'm always doing some type of stuff that's music related. And I study these things. And what I do is I incorporate it with my own style. And I learned from it because the last thing I want somebody to do and any DJ is to be categorized as one style of DJ. Why can't we be categorized as a DJ, period? You know what I mean? Rather than saying, yeah, that's a Latin DJ. Yeah, he specializes in hip hop in the UK or why do he specialize in this? But I want to be able to be branded as an all around person. Notice in my name when you market me, I never use the word DJ is because I never want to be referred to as a DJ. I want to be referred to as a brand. And that's mm-hmm. what I want to do. I want to brand and I want to help people branding and I want to brand everybody to be able to have an open formatted mind for everything, not just Latin music, not just urban music, not just mainstream music, but also for mobile, private, and all the other stuff that we were talking about down the line. But in order to be a mobile DJ open format, connoisseur and just an expert in your field, you have to break down genre by genre. And I feel that we're going to bring you back for repeat lessons. You mentioned bachata or various yeah, there's, other styles. There's, there's lots of things I don't want to leak out yet that we talked but, about. We always keep the goodies in the bag. You know, so, well, let's like, just oh, take it you know, one genre at a time. And let, let me explain how the hackathon works. This is your first time hosting let alone being a part of a hackathon. So welcome. Everyone make Miguel feel welcome. Let's get some ones in the chat. That's how we get the interaction. Miguel, I want you, if you can, to keep an eye on the chat. 
Yep. See everybody there. Be ready to answer any questions. And see, you got Steven, you got Ed, you got Pilo, Daryl, a lot of fans in there. Look at that. Excellent. So this is a hackathon. And if you all are true hackers, I need your help. We need your help. Miguel doesn't need as much help. <laughs> He's got it in the bag, but- Look, believe, it be not, hey, to- hey, believe it or not, sometimes you can say, I don't need help, but it's always good to take knowledge from somebody. It is. It is. It is. Yeah, oh, he's, he wants to learn from you, no doubt. And here's how it works. You're just going to hack with us by multitasking. So if you can, go to a second tab or a second monitor, okay? Open up on a second tab, crateoftheweek.com. Crateoftheweek.com. Again, I repeat, crateoftheweek.com. If you do, that's going to get you one step closer to being a hacker. Let me show you what it looks like on my screen. Everybody pay attention. By the way, everybody, if you are watching the replay on YouTube, thank you. Thank you for helping us become 2,000 members. We're starting to get ourselves quite the following and tons of questions come in. Everyone's asking, oh no, I missed the live. I can't be a part of the live. I work on Tuesdays. Listen, we'll always catch them on our YouTube channel. But if you were to go to createoftheweek.com, you would land on the reggaeton throwbacks hackathon. Let's define the terms, Miguel, reggaeton. Throwbacks, what are we looking for? We're looking for anything from the years, maybe 2001 or 2012, throwbacks, and the TBT is what I call TBT, which we normally call Throwback Thursday in our former language. We're talking about the Daddy Yankees when Daddy Yankee started in his prime. Daddy Yankee started in 1990 something, and he wasn't going by the name of Daddy Yankee for most people that don't know that his name was Winchester. And I he did not know like, that. He looked at like he was 80 years old rapping. So he had, the big, he had the big mustache curled up. It is, it's, it's crazy. But we're looking for stuff like your Daddy Yankees, your, your Don Omars, your Joely Randys, your Weeson and Yandels. These people, these artists, they were the ones that put reggaeton on the map. It started in the 1990-something. And to be quite frankly, I really didn't get put, to, put onto this style of music to the year 2000. So I, was I will the- tell you that's exactly... Can I share a quick story? Absolutely. The worst train wreck I ever had in public. You never train wreck, I'm sure, right? But uh, I train wreck. Look, man, I've been I've been through some stuff where I was DJing for fifteen thousand people and the audio cut off. <laughs> I had to find a way to improvise my talent to control that audience. Why I had to reboot a system. So I've been through some stuff aside from train wrecking that you know. You've survived. You have stories to tell yourself. Oh, yeah. I remember I was hosting a live mix show on a wild format and it was the five o'clock traffic jam mixing records. And I'm taking these instant requests. And there was this girl that I was trying to impress on line three. And she was always like, she was the prize pig. The one I was always like caller number nine to win like the free prizes, but she was just a super sweetheart. And I wanted to make her happy. And I put her live on the air. She's like, Hey, you got to play some you got to play this new hype music. I'm like, what are you talking about? In, in my head, I'm mixing artists like Fat Joe, like 99 beat per minute. And I'm in my head, like in the for 2000s, second, that's all that was second, playing. I thought she was about to start chanting. We, no. <laughs> She's like, now I want you to play some reggaeton. I'm like, what is reggaeton? She's, she's trying to explain to me. I'm live on the air and she's, you got to go download some reggaeton. So I'm over on LimeWire over here, <laughs> pulling down whatever I can oh, find. Yeah. Wow. And I remember Napster. <laughs> do you remember DJ, is it Casanova or was it, there's a, there was a DJ who was exclusive editor for reggaeton. Yeah, there was a big pioneer DJ by the name of DJ Casanova. Was a that big- was him. Yeah, he uh, he used to do these mashup with hip hop and reggaeton. Yeah, so I pulled that, down his uh, I pulled down his "Drop It Like It's Hot" remix, right? And I'm coming out of Fat Joe, didn't you? and then I I get completely thrown off by the beat because you all got a different the reggaeton's got that different beat, yeah, same yeah, yeah. beat. And I'm it's the snare com- behind it. It's the snare and the snare. Compl- My program director of the radio station n- knows nothing about DJing. Called me up online on the hotline and said. I've never heard a train wreck until now. <laughs> I'm assuming that when he called you on the hotline, he called you on the rate on the phone that was off the air. The one that doesn't go on the air. <laughs> he finally heard a train wreck and understood what it actually meant. Yeah. Hey, I don't mean to cut you off there. I'm just looking at some of the stuff in the chat. Some of the people that are in the chat line and you were talking about some artists from the reggaeton throwback as we were talking. Right. And some people are there talking about the noise, which the noise is very popular and i got some stuff coming in crate hackers that we're going to create oh, okay. the noise so 
those are the stuff that I'm talking about right now is very throwback. It's beyond what we're doing today, a little bit more throwback. We're talking about 1999, maybe a little bit more down. We're talking about when the vinyls used to have the pop on the record. Oh, wow. Funky mix, about, ultra mix. We're talking about there. So I see a lot of people there in the chat and they're uh, talking about uh, the noise, playero and stuff like that. Wow. A lot of stuff like that is coming. Mucha it's going to be cool, man. So let's uh, unlock the crate with your two song choices. I threw up what a, uh, the Gasolina and Mi Gente and let's just see how those songs are trending. And what you're going to see is the work on the left-hand side done by Miguel Mix. We're going to do a quick run through of what he built for us. And then we're going to look on the right hand side. And that's where my picks and everybody else's picks are going to go head to head. So ready to start hacking, Miguel? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So here we are on the left hand side. I'm just going to slowly scroll down. And Miguel, I'm just going to be your mouse. And you tell me a story of this crate you built. This crate. It's called reggaeton throwbacks. It's a crate based on hit for hit reggaeton music from anywhere from the year, like I said, 2001 or 2012. There was a time and point that reggaeton music fell off. Not everybody was on the playero, like I was telling you, and the noise, which were two big producers, DJ Playero and the guys from the noise. And then there's other stuff like an album called Sandunguero, which was by DJ Blast. But this crate right here is when reggaeton music actually started taking a peak. So reggaeton music started taking a peak with Teo Calderon, Daddy Yankee, even Evie Queen. Back when Dale Don Dale started hitting, Gasolina started hitting, Daddy Yankee. Too. And then it starts going up and up. You start getting your De La Ghetto. You start getting your new generation of artists because every 10 years we get a new, a new stack of artists and it evolves and the music changes. So it starts going up all the way up on 2012, 2011, give or take. This right here, this crate, you're going to see Blanc. You're going to see Zangie Lennox. You're going to see Teo Cal, you're going to see Daddy Yankee, Don Omar, Tony Dice, Ian Del, Evie Queen. You're going to see a mixture of all those artists. And I promise you that everything in this crate is hit for hit. And if you look at this crate, you might say to yourself, wow, I forgot about that song. Basically, what I'm saying is you're going to look at this crate. Some of the stuff you might say, yeah, I still play to this day, but there's going to be some stuff here that you're going to say, wow, I forgot about this song. Let me incorporate it into my sets. Wow. This is. Hit after hit, there's no doubt. And if this is a sign of things to come, we found our guy. Man, I want to take you over to the right-hand side here in a second, and we'll do the leaderboard in a moment. But how often are you getting requests for this? How often are you sprinkling in? What's the... Some of the stuff in here, it's... Like I said, I try to do stuff open formatted. So whether you're an opening DJ or you're doing a mobile event or you're a closing DJ at a nightlife event or you're on the radio... Everything that you're going to play here is, is going to be utilized and it's definitely going to either get somebody to put their hands up, sing the song or, or bring memories yeah. to their minds. And that's the thing that I always like to do when DJing. Our job is to put smiles on the face. And this playlist right here will definitely put smiles on people's faces and bring remembrance to any audience that likes reggaeton music, especially throwbacks, because honestly, throwbacks are some of the best stuff. Some of the new stuff is cool. I love it. I love Bad Bunny, Rao Alejandro and all these artists, Osuna. And the people that are here now, we're going to have stuff like that. But today's topic is like, don't throwbacks. Where is the choice for getting music? What's the source? Is there a pool? Is there a resource? What are your resources? Where are you going right now? My resources, I told you, I got. Out of, I go to some of the sites that are associated with our with our app at CrayHackers.com, DJ City. I use, what is it, Heavy Hits. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's some other tools like that that I have. I, obviously, from being in the industry for so long, I get exclusives. You so, get the relationships. Yeah, yeah you get so the, once, the hot once stuff. You, once you build that relationship with these people, you start getting all these exclusive intros, outros, breaks, starters, original records, mash, mashups. Uh, so there's some stuff out there that I get that it'll be very hard for people. Playing at Madison Square Garden has its benefits, everyone. Listen to this. Yeah, right? believe, it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, man. We're hanging out with Miguel Mix. Get your questions ready, by the way. We're going to talk to him shortly, but a lot of people are asking, what is, how do we get this crate? Where do we get the crate? Again, if you are watching on YouTube or maybe you just snuck into our Zoom channel, welcome aboard. This is the Crate Hackathon and CrateHackathon.com is where you would register for this every Tuesday. We always switch it up. We're always talking about different genres and different styles of music. And then we send you over to the secondary tab, which again is Crate of the week.com crate of the week.com crate of the week.com helps you unlock miguel mixes 
mix. And then just giving us two songs helps you crack it open. But let's just take everything at face value. And we realize this man is a superstar, but even superstars have their flaws, which is why we're going to play a round of ones and O's. Are y'all ready? It's been about three weeks since we played this game. Ones and O's. You've never played, you've never even been on a hackathon before, Miguel. You have no idea what you're in for. I have no idea what I'm in for, but I'm looking forward to it. We'll take it easy on you. But the way this works is you take your keyboard, you press one if we should keep the song, and then you press zero if the song should just be taken out of the crate. So, yes, we're taking Miguel Mix's crate and putting it to the test right here. Yes, we're taking my crate and we're criticizing it. Yes. That's it. I hope you're, I hope you're not sensitive like me. I hate critique. Oh, yeah, Explain to them the rules. Tell them that to press either one or zero when we play a song. Okay. If they like it. Very simple. One, if you bump it. Zero, if you dump it. I'm going to spin the wheel or the screen. And you tell me when to stop, Miguel. Stop. Okay. All right. Let's play this song. And you tell me, would we play this or not? One, 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 one. One, 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 look at all these ones. Natalia with a one. One with a one. One with a one. Ed with a one. Steven with a one. One, one, one. I think we have our we, I think we have our answer. Dude. I think we have our answer. Hector El Father. That's a big hit, man, by Hector El Father. It was big, man. Hector El Father no longer does no music, but he was one of the pioneers. He became a pastor. I still got communication with him, man. He's a real good guy. Uh, is that, yeah. Okay, this is going to be good. I'm going to need you to not only help me pronounce the names, but also give me a history. Give me give, every time we yeah. play the song, tell yeah, the story because I'm sure. You, yeah, Hector, all right, tell me when to stop. The father, man, good guy, man. Stop. Plan B. One zero. If you wouldn't, oh, we got a zero. We had one zero in a flurry of ones. I don't even want to call him out because he's getting drowned out. One 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 one. One, 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 one. I'll take one. the point five. <laughs> a point a lot five. of ones, though. It's a warm up song. P.S. Why do we talk over the songs? P.S. Why do we not play music during hackathons? Because we do respect the artists. We are going to try and play this on YouTube and not get the copyright ban hammer. So if you hear me screaming oh. ones, that's the reason why. Okay, plan B. What's the story with that? Plan B. Plan B is plan B. Normally, what they say is plan B is plan B. Plan B. Got it. See what uh, I mean? They were known for what we call in Spanish, el duo. They were very sexual. Their lyrics are very sexual. They've been out since the 90s. And this was a point in their career when they started doing what we like to call bachalón. It was like a flavor of merengue and bachata together. And uh, this was back in the times when it was out. My, and that style of music was out. There was a time period that there was like a bachata reggae merengue type like you hear, you hear that it's very fast it sounds like you can either dance merengue yeah. to it or, but at the same time you can still get the reggaeton feeling to it mm. that was the time that they came out with something like that and that's a song that uh, that changed their career not one of their top songs not one of their top throwback songs but it is uh, a song that people used to vibe to uh, yeah but it's got a, it got a point five from or oh, todd sig miller gave it a half a point and Bobby i see, gave it a, point I see five. a half a point <laughs> a lot of ones. They can't all be winners. Let's do two hey, more hey, here. Hey, Tell, hey, me more more than <laughs> Tell me when to stop. Stop. Zion and Lennox. One from Jay. One from Fabio. Eddie says one. Bobby says one. Omar says one. Too many ones to count, Todd. Slow your roll on the ones, Todd. Leave room for one. Man. One, one, one. Lennox. One, one. Lennox. 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 Zion and Lennox is one of the best top duos in the reggaeton industry. Hey, Lennox been out for so long till today, they are still putting out hits and they are still in their prime. So <laughs> they, you can't go wrong with them. Man. Anything from Zion and Lennox is a hit. So far, this entire crate's a hit. Give me one more, buddy. Stop. All right. Oh, oh, oh this is a good one. <laughs> one, 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 one. One, 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 one. <laughs> Fabio, Fabio's loving it. Robert Pop with the just one one. All he needs is one. Damn. Okay, yo. Keep the ones flying. I'm going to stop the music. Keep the ones flying, not just for the music you're hearing, but for the curator, our man, Miguel Mix. He just survived a round of ones and out. Survived it. Sydney Yandel, man. To this day, there's, that's another duo like Zion and Lennox that are in their peak. 
They've been out since the 90s as well. They also broke up as an artist where you got we seen as a solo artist. Yandel is a solo artist. They did their solo projects, but they always came back together to reunite, to give us good music. And till today, they're on tour. They just finished their last tour together as a duo. So now they're solo artists. They are doing some events together still that they promised, but uh, they're still, there's one of those artists is that are out that they were been here since the 90s and it's 2023 and we're still getting hits from them. No top five duo artists in the reggaeton industry. Wow. Get a picture for me because I've never, I think a lot of us haven't had this opportunity. We, we get stereotyped into our own genres and we never get a chance to really peek out beyond the curtains. They think of Aaron, they think, okay, he's a club kid. He's a wedding DJ. I wouldn't think about putting him in a reggaeton atmosphere or a Latin dance floor. What am I missing? Tell me from a DJ's perspective, the difference between going to one of your parties versus any other. There's got to be some advantages. You party more than we do, right? You you party harder than us. You want me to compare seeing me live to anything else that's going on? Okay. Yes, please. Yes, please. Man, let me tell you, man. Let me just give you a little something. Okay. I just, Aaron, we've been working together for a very little time. I'm going to ask you a question since you asked me a question. Sure. So what do you get off me? What do you feed off of me when we talk? All I need is one word to describe me. Hustle. Just I've get this desire. You have a desire to hustle. You've got this work ethic that I mentioned earlier. I love that about you. It doesn't seem like you'll ever want to stop. And I like that about you. The thing you. about me is it don't matter how big or small the event. I like to give energy. I don't want to yes. be that kid that sits behind a booth that came for the food or that came for the hookah or for the drink. I want to be that guy that everybody remembers and goes home with a smile. I want to be that guy that when somebody's having a bad time, they walk out of there and say they had the time of their life. And that's the type of person that I am. And now I'm going to say it in Spanish for our Latinos that are in here. So that's what I feed off. And believe it or not, there's been times that people were like, oh, wow, how do you feel like DJing in front of 50,000 people? Yeah. And I throw them my arm and my hair stick up. Yeah. It's crazy, but the adrenaline that I get off it, the passion I have for it, it's incredible. And this is why I believe what we're doing on this site, man. This is why I wanted to be a part of this. This is why I'm here right now, because I believe that I want to have, I want everybody to have that energy. You know what I mean? I want everybody to have that energy. So not only are we building a crate together, but everybody to get knowledge off of it. I want everybody Mm. to not only get knowledge off of it, but I want them to stay away from playing the same music all the time. See, right now today, the reason why I chose reggaeton throwbacks is because it's forgotten. But that was something that revolutionized reggaeton and brought it to the peak that it was. That is what gave Daddy Yankee the options to work with 50 Cent. That is the time that gave Noriega the time to work with Nina Sky and make a reggaeton. That is what revolutionized Fat Joe to allow Teo Deron to do a lean back Spanish version. And now I'm going to repeat it in Spanish like I normally do. Now, that's just pretty much what I said in English so everybody can understand it. I want to get people comfortable with opening up their minds and not just worrying about today's music. That's why I selected. Yeah, but video. but but before we bring you on the team, I, I got a question for you. I gotta, How is your music organization? Do you have Serato face, Miguel Mix? Look, if a person tells you they never got Serato face, they lied. They <laughs> lied. You know how many times I did a private event and the maitre d' comes up to me and she comes and she says, oh, cut the cake in about five minutes. I need you to make that announcement. <laughs> and the song's cutting down to 30 seconds and... I'm the type of DJ, I don't like to play the same stuff. So when I go into my crate, I'm like, oh my God, what do I play? What do I play? What do I play? But working with Crate Hackers has gotten me a lot more organized and I get to what I got to get to on the fly. I think, I believe, and much like we had with CB earlier, I was having conversations with the UK. I was like, the time zone for him is like one o'clock. And I think he'd be great at a hackathon on his own. I think bringing him in and doing a UK hackathon would be phenomenal. What if I just stepped aside at some point and you're now starting to catch on with the rules of a hackathon. We talk about music, we build a crate, we talk shop, we spend an hour together. First off, audience, what would you think about having him as a host of hackathons, maybe on a separate time slot, something like that? And Miguel, how would you feel about that? I haven't really asked you. And now this is getting awkward because I may have put my foot in my mouth. (laughs) Miguel, host hackathons with us, damn it. You know what? I like it. He likes it. He's in. He's in. Yo, 
We need it. We genuinely do. We talked about how there's limitations. Only My brain is only this big. I can only contain so much knowledge. Miguel, you'd be phenomenal as not only a host, but just helping out representing crates for a, a culture that is truly undeserved. Look, if I explain to you guys some of the stuff that I'm working on, you guys will be very satisfied. Pretty much what I said, I just want to be able to bring everybody on CrateHackers.com. Great quality. <clears throat> Got a lot of stuff. And I'm going to put Latino America on my back. Ah, yay. This couldn't work out any better. I'm really excited to have you on. And I want to encourage everybody to hang out with radio, who will soon be hosting a Q&A. Start thinking about some questions. We'll be hanging out with Miguel Mix in about 10 minutes. Before we do that, let's take one more quick peek at the crate and see how everybody else's suggestions came through. While you did build a phenomenal foundation, let's see if there's any picks inside the reggaeton throwback crate that maybe somebody else recommended. Miguel, I'm going to take us down the line there and you just narrate for me what you Tony Dice, uh, Solo. That's featuring Plan B. And uh, for people that didn't know, as you see, we're going down on the BPM. You see everything is BPM analyzed. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hang tight. Look on the right-hand side. Over here, like Edwin Lopez has got his crate. He's recommending Daddy Yankee. You've got six oh, likes oh, so got far. You. I got to move your face in because it's blocking my view. <laughs> oh, okay. Here, let's do All this. right, here we go. We're going down the line. Gasolina. Okay, I see it. Daddy Yankee. Obviously, Gasolina is a banger. Porto, not a throwback but it is a, a song of the year. That's a killer. What we'll do is we can thumb up each one. We'll vote it up each time. So if we should add it to the crate, I'll thumb up. There you go. Wow, that's another good one. Going down, Ibiza is on there. Sir, Sir Speedy. Sir Speedy is also good. That's about a 107 BPM off the top of my head. Reggaeton Latino is another one. That's when Fat Joe came on board to do reggaeton. Now, let me, can we stop there for one second? Yeah. So you see that record you just thumbed up right now? I don't know if it went to the top. The Reggaeton Latino. Don Omar, LDA, Fat Joe. Little story behind that. I used to DJ for those artists back in 2006, 2007. It's crazy that to see that song and people actually enjoyed that record. That's a remix version. It's not the original. The original was good, but the remix gave it more of a flavor. And bro, I used to DJ for that group, LDA. That was the first... Dominican Puerto Rican duo, female and male. There is no female and male duo groups. So I just wanted to point that out there. That me seeing that record just brings back so many, so many memories, man. <laughs> but also to see other people's reactions to your crate and the ones that you could probably add. Rompe, that's a banger right there. Daddy Yankee Rompe. That is a banger. Opa, another banger. I'm trying to keep up with you, so don't mind me. Sure. So another banger. Quiero Al, that's on the crate. Then you got Theo Peron right there, Dominicana. That's, woo, that album. It, then you got the original Reggaeton Latino, which is the same one that we have with the remix, but that's the same record. The Yankee, Daddy Yankee will put the microphone down, the whole arena will sing it. And even the people that don't speak Spanish will know the words. Dan Sacuduro is a little bit more current. I want to say current, but I think Dan Sacuduro was like a 2018 or something like that, 2017. Oh, really? Is it, I feel like it's older than that. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. It but cloudy, it's, yeah. def it's definitely not within that year of 20. True, true. That's true. You're right. You're looking 2000, at the 2000s. 2002 to 2012 definitely wasn't in that era. But it got is. It. A, that's a banger. Mi gente, J Balvin. That's really not on the category, but it is a major. Fairly new. My bad. Hit. That was me. Hey, <laughs> you're entitled to it. Um, Overall, pretty good suggestions, though, right? Great suggestions. suggestions. Don say ya. Palo. Exito. If you hear me say palo, that's a hit. Don't say y'all right up there. Zion and Lennox, Andrew Jimenez. Oof, that's a killer. Guatauba. It doesn't have an artist name. It says various artists. That is by mm -hmm. Renzo. That is a banger by Plan B. That's the artist that we were talking about yeah. earlier. That's a banger. Aventura. We see y'all. That's another banger. Daddy Yankee. Yamilet. Oh, that's a banger. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yamilet, if I'm not mistaken, came out in Playero 39. That's what we were talking about when I was talking to you earlier about the noise and Playero. Yeah. That's one of those records that when you hear that, you're like, wow. And let me explain to you about that uh, Yamilet, that Yankee. It was something created that uh, the producer, his name is Diego, and uh, that record, that Yankee wasn't at his peak of his career yet. Yeah, that Yankee was awesome. 
But Playero, there's a story behind that record. So the producer, DJ Playero, which produced those projects called Playero 39, 40, 41, he numbered them. He's a legend. Good friend of mine. Maybe I'll get him to join us one day. Yes, please. He went to Daddy Yankee and he basically told, he told them, I want you to rhyme something for me, spit something for me. And they're in the studio. And then Yankee just started talking all this fast stuff in Spanish. <laughs> And bro, they took a reggae dance hall beat. If I'm not mistaken, it was, what's that guy's name? Shaka, I can't pronounce his name. The reggae artist, Shaka, the something. Like the rich girl beat. Let's just say rich girl beat. He took I know the beat. I don't know how to pronounce the name though. He took that in there and threw that beat over him. And they did a freestyle over it. And bro, that song to this day, it's so viral. When he sings that record, it's the arenas go bananas. And that record changed the game when it went, when we were talking about the noise, Sandunguero, Playero, and those type of style of albums. That record just revolutionized that whole category. It just went like this. I think we could sit back and listen to this. There's stories to each song and there's experience within Miguel that we're just going to tap into. Obviously, we're going to lock him in for some future hackathons, but you're getting tons of compliments in the chat people are loving the crate and again if you want to get this head over to crateoftheweek.com and pull it down and add to it there's a lot of things that a lot of djs or people in the entertainment business need to understand and i'll say this in spanish after please uh, the music industry changes and a lot of people don't understand that there's days when you were recording a booth and you didn't have styrofoam or you didn't have soundproof room you had to figure out a way how to get that clean audio then you got auto-tune. Auto-tune became a thing. Back then, they didn't have that auto-tune working like they do today. Basically, what I'm saying is the music industry, you got to keep up with the technology. You got to keep up with the music. You got to keep up with everything. Some people like to use 1200. Some people like to use controllers. Some people like to use CDJs. The point is, I know a friend that used to do some gigs in Las Vegas, and it didn't go well for him. So... Who is that person? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't CD want you to be that guy. Limitations. But basically what I'm saying is I don't, you got to evolve with the years coming. Uh, That's and right. If you're a person that takes this business serious like I do, then you always want to, there's never a time and point where you say you know it all because to stay on top of your game, you have to keep learning. Yeah. And I like to learn. I like to take advice from people. And if people criticize me, that's fine. I'll take it as positive criticism. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a safe space that you've just entered into, and that's the Create Hackers. We all learn from each other, and we never stop learning. I, a majority of our hackers are about our age. We're dads. We're DJ dads. We we still love talking about this gear and this tech, and we're never going to stop. Yeah, and that's very important to keep evolving with the technology and with the yes. music. You have to stay on top of that. Look, man, I travel the world. I just got back from Germany 18 days between España and Germany. I don't have time to be making crates or staying in my computer, opening file, browsing. All right, well, I'm through here, slide on. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? It takes too much time. This platform is just like, all right, cool. You're associated with the, with the record pool companies that we have, the affiliates we have. But hey, if you trust your hard drive like I do, I go to my local drive and just upload what I want. And boom, everything is just there. I take the file. I drop it in, open up Serato, and bam, everything is there. It helps me out, man. I travel. I don't have time. I'm on a plane. I'm either doing a private event. I'm working with artists. I'm booking. And do you think I got time to do all that? But then people say, Miguel, how are you so organized? I'm going to make this noise for the cut because that's going to be my Instagram reel for tomorrow right there. Miguel Mix, thank you for the endorsement. <laughs> yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. Like I said, man. Hey, at Radio, take over for us, man. I'm going to let him be the host of the Q&A, your chance to hang out with Miguel Mix before we do the after party. Everyone, welcome Radio back as I unmute him and bring him back as host. Go ahead. I am here. What up, everyone? Woo. We've been enjoying it. The chat is going crazy. So good to have you guys. Good to see the enjoyment. But we got some questions here for Miguel. Everyone, if you want to ask your question live, turn on your camera. At the bottom of the Zoom toolbar, click on raise hand. We'll have you ask your question live. There is a rule though, ask your question uh, and I'll then mute you because we want to be able to ask as many questions as we can. So there'll be no follow-up questions. All right, you're cool with that. Right there, 
click on the raise hand and we will call you up to ask your question. I'm not the only one with questions, am I? <laughs> no, we got Jen Gardy on. Good. So we'll have you unmute and join us. There you go. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Oh, am there I talking? You, go. you got oh, you. Oh my. Hey, good evening, everybody. DJ J, also known as DJ Wusa. I just want to thank you so much for, uh, first and foremost, this platform. I want to thank you for bringing DJs together, right? Because iron sharpened iron. And we want to make sure that we keep this going, moving into the new year, sir. You are a, you're a pillar. All right. And I, and I ask that you keep it going. Thank you. For Miguel, how do you oh, stay for current? Oh, no, damn it. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave. I'm out of here. Bye, guys. Aaron, sir, how do you stay current? Because I know you're very active in the business. You're very active in everything that you do. How do you maintain staying current in the things that you do professionally, in addition to keeping the business moving and progressing and motivating the way that you do? Is it the people you bring on? Is it your love of the process? Like, how is it that you're so successful, not only in what it is that you do, but also in the business side of things? That was for you, Aaron. <laughs> Wait, it's for me? That was for you. No. Okay, because I was... Now we'll pose it to Miguel right after. I was... Can you repeat the question? <laughs> I thought the question was for Miguel. That's why I tuned out. Oh, no. For, like I said, thank you so much for the for the platform, first and thank foremost. Thank you. Yes, for sure. Yes. How is it that you are so successful as a DJ and then also able to transform that energy, that positivity, right, from <sighs> the, right, to the yes, business okay, side? Okay, yes. Now I got... <laughs> it took me a second. Listen... I've been given the gift of being supported by this company, thankfully. It's a very rare opportunity. I try not to gloat. I try not to brag. I, it's the worst quality a DJ can have to be an egotistical fuck. I hate those people. I do not like ego. I just, I never liked it. And I, I wanted to just be myself purely. And I think that helped me get into a position of leadership of sorts, but I don't take it for granted. I'm constantly thankful of the people who are around me because I know it's not going to be just me running the ship on my own. Never would have happened without people like Joe or Dom or Glenn or Austin or everybody else that's on the staff right now. But how does it transform over? It's because you give yourself time. How do I get this energy into my business? How are you feeling it? It's because I've been given the freedom to do exactly what the heck I want to do with my life. And I really want to encourage everybody, if you feel like you're lost, if you feel like you're stuck and you're in this same nine to five role, I promise you it can be temporary because there's an idea sitting in the back of your head that is gnawing away at you, telling you that you are right. Something in your head is saying to you, keeping you up at night, there's something bigger than this. And to me, I always thought that there was a, opportunity to talk about music again. Again, I've always said to my team, we don't talk about music enough. We don't talk about the what brought us here to begin with, music. We talk about Serato. We talk about Rekordbox. We talk about the new gear that just came out. We don't talk about music. And I think that's where my energy comes from is just, is it's the music. So that's mine. What's yours? And if you're stuck in that rut, I promise you, you will find that community that supports you. You just got to take that leap. You got to take that risk. And so now I have the freedom to do what I absolutely love with the people I love. And I'm glad I had a chance to answer that. I'm glad it wasn't just for Miguel, but let's take that question and pass it over to our host of the future hackathons, <laughs> Miguel Mix. There's an energy about you. Talk to me. What keeps that flame going for you? flame man honestly it's got to be the passion that i have for it man i i have a big passion for music man i'm hispanic i'm puerto rican but i love all styles of music i love music there, there's something that i'm going to say personal so people could understand there's something that i always said about myself is music saved my life no matter the problems that i have i always look to music to always put that smile in my face I always say things like this to some people. Us DJs, the audience don't know what we go through. And sometimes we got to deal with it. We got to deal with a lot of headaches, sometimes even alcoholics. And the owners or the promoters or not even the promoters, the person that contracted you. And you have to maintain that composure of professionalism. Keep a smile on your face because you want to continue to do this. Music allows me to keep that smile on my face. So I always look for music. I don't let music look for me. I look for music. And believe it or not, man, I'm going to give you a little, throw you a little bone out there. I'm Puerto Rican. I love reggaeton music, but it's not my preferred music to listen to. 
you know, I listen so much of it. I listen to anything from rock to anything. Like, it's just, I love music so much. And the passion for it is your answer. There you go. I think we can all relate. Yep, yep. It's bringing a superb herb. Yes, sir. Good to have you with us. I'm here. Yeah, I'm how Miguel is. You always like to bring energy and passion and high energy and never down type music. I'm one of the old school DJs that I started DJing back in professionally back in 1978, just after I got out of the military. But I was always in the band back in the 60s and 50s. I was always playing a trumpet player. And I'm a retired architect, but I got into with the, with Daddy Yankee. I met him when he first came out. And we playing. I was with VIP Record Pool, Alpha Zero, you know, in the Boogie Down Bronx. I lived in the Bronx for 22 years, and we did. We were doing promotional parties, and Daddy Yankee just came out with his first release, and I was DJing a reggae set and a Latin set, and that's when he gave me his copy and his autograph and stuff like that. When we was on Madison Avenue, we were doing a promotional party, so that's when I first met him. But I was always I was like the honorary Puerto Rican because I joined the, I was in the Latin record pool because I was playing so much Latin in my club up in New York and in, in, in White Plains and also up in New Rochelle, the Reigns up in the, the Palace New Rochelle. And that I was always, it was always a mixed crowd. You know, and I had open format. So I was always high energy and I didn't listen to radio. So my everything I played was always new cuts. I just turned the radio off and they said, you got it? Nope. Let me tell you something, man. You I broke be- everybody, you know, broke the records like that way. That's awesome. Let me tell you something. Don't get rid of that autograph. Hang that up, man. That dude I still is- got it. I still got that there, boy. Oh, that yeah. dude is a legend. You, I, got, I got that. You, look, you keep that, man. And you know what you do? You get it printed on your printer. And you tattoo that <laughs> autograph right in your arm. Yeah, look, man, right that, that son always said you mentioned age. And, and I've yeah. always told people because I'm I don't hear promoters or other yeah. people always say, I got to go with the young guy. No, you don't have to go with the young guy. You got to go with the guy with the most knowledge and the right. guy that's organized with his stuff because right. it doesn't matter what age you are. Obviously, at some point, yeah, I can't do it no more. But I hey, did, yeah, you could do it. You could do it for as long as your body can take it and Age-proof. you could still be in your prime just like these young guys. <laughs> right. That's right. Mix with all. Thanks for joining us, Herb. Herb. All right. Next, we got DJ Pilo. Have you? Un- I love Herb. He's so great. Oh, hey guys, how I are would you? just I, I would sit there and listen to him talk all day. Honestly, he's got stories. He got stories on stories. Oh, you and there you go. You're back. Oh, you keep muting. Let's unmute you one more time. I had it. I had it. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, how are you, man? Thank you so much for making this possible for everyone. I mean, yeah, thank you so much, man. Bringing the Latin community to this hub. This is just amazing. Something I've been waiting for a long time. I'm an old school Latino from Miami, which I grew up just in salsa and merengue, where now reggaeton, since I still do some DJ work myself, this is something that I'm like, I'm not on the grid because I'm a little older, so I get to hear it now. My question to you, Miguel, I know that is primarily from Puerto Rico, but I know there's probably a whole bunch of artists from Panama. Uh, uh, there's a lot of artists in Panama, a lot of, and a lot of talented artists. Sometimes they don't have... To be quite frankly, I'm just going to be straight blunt about it. They don't have the marketing sources that we have. They don't have the mindset that we have. They have the talent, but they don't have the marketing. They don't have the right person behind them pushing them so their music can evolve. Let me tell you something. I've been so blessed to travel the world. And the reason why I try to be so accurate with what I present as far as music is because I was able to go to Colombia, Peru, Panama. And I hear this music. And let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you a little story. When I go to Panama and you hear the music they're playing over there. Yes, they're playing reggaeton. They're playing embo, bachata, and they're playing all that. But they also play their style of reggaeton and their style of embo and their style of Latin trap or whatever. And it's good. And when you go over there and you're about to DJ that set and you see the opening DJ playing and the crowd like, hey, and I'm saying to myself, what is that? So. I take that knowledge from them, whether it's asking the DJ what it was or whether I'm pulling out Shazam because I do pull out Shazam, which, (laughs) which, by the way, we have something integrated and on our website that that works with Shazam and uh, all the Shazam stuff that I didn't know. We could just make a crate off that. But other than that, I take that and I put that incorporated into my style, which is something that like what we're doing on CrateHackers.com. We're trying to incorporate all that type of sound into the crate. So that way, when you're DJing, it don't matter where you're DJing, you know that you can play this and be safe with what you're playing. 
but that music in Panama or Colombia, right now, another example, I'm gonna speed through it real quick. Don took it to another level. You can't forget Panama. You can't forget Colombia now. You got J Balvin, Tine Bless, Maluma. Right now, Colombia, these Colombian artists that are producing reggaeton music, they're up there at the Bad Bunny level. Right. You know what I mean? There's an artist right now by the name of Fade. He's the number one artist right now streaming. Wow. And he's from Colombia. And he, and you will listen to that guy and you will think he's from Puerto Rico making reggaeton music, but he's not. Yeah. And now there's like a selection of music right now that's called Corridos. It's mm-hmm. a Mexican style of what I call chera. But now it's more urbanized. Like, for example, Peso Pluma. He is averaging at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, more views than Bad Bunny right now. And he's only been out for a certain time. And he's rapping over Mexican ranchera music. And when I go DJ at private events, I did three weeks ago, I did a wedding and these Colombians asked me for a peso pluma. And I'm like, I'm like, you're Colombian. What do you know about this? This is, I had it. I played it. They sung it. If they were Mexican. Then the same thing goes with any type of genre of music, man. And like you were saying, you're from Miami. In Miami, Cubatón is big. That's where it's at, man. Cuba took, Cuba took what, and they made their own style. Like the Dominicans did them both. And Cubatón is Cuban, I call it, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not Cuban. I call it Cuban reggaeton music, just a little bit more faster. And when you go to Miami, if you don't have a Cubaton Creek, bro, you're, not, you're out of gas. <laughs> they're they're going to ask the opening DJ to get back on. Yeah, yeah. All and right. That's what I'm finding because with the private events that I do, and I get a lot of, okay. I live in Asheville, so I get a lot of brides and grooms from Miami per se. They come up here, they try to find their perfect fit, a person that kind of knows the style. And then sometimes I get somebody from Panama, from Venezuela. I did a Venezuelan party just a couple of days ago. They wanted some tambora mix with some other stuff. And I'm like, man, where do I go? Because I'm like, I'm, I'm out of the loop. Well, let me correct myself. Sydney Diaz said that when I was talking about the Mexican style of music that they're playing today, which we call it corridos, which Mexicans corridos. call it corridos, right? You, you could go on the internet and type corridos and you will see all the artists. We got Grupo Tera. You got Peso Pluma, but you had, there's a bunch of new artists and old classic artists that are producing music like that. You even got Carol G, a Colombian. She did a yeah. record like that and it's dope. Yeah. It's on her new album. But somebody in the chat, I forgot, what was the name I just said? Let me see if I could go up real quick for one second here. Sydney Diaz, they call it Banda. So I might have yeah. been wrong there, but just in case if Sydney got that down to the T, let's just say Banda. <laughs> but yeah, man, that, to answer your question, man. Uh, yeah, you appreciate have, it. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. No, I- Thanks for joining us, Pilo. All right, and we're going to get to our last question before we switch gears to Lionel. Let's have you unmute. Yeah, stick around for the after party. After this last question, we'll take any questions you've got. And I got a few more cool new tools to share. Hey, Dominic, if you're still around, let's talk about Thursday too. So step on up. Yo. There you go. What's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? We are, first of all, this was awesome. Miguel, pass, bro. I, I am... The Puerto Rican is coming out of me. I can't stop listening to some of the <laughs> tracks that he's. <laughs> Yo, let me. You know what? You know what, Don? Let me get you an empanada, patio. I got you. That, that's our version of a Jamaican beef patty. <laughs> hey, Dominic, let's go ahead and get Lionel to stick with us on the screen, by the way, because I want to talk yeah. about Thursdays, but we have one final hand raised. But I really yeah. want you to sure. stick around for the Thursday announcement. Yeah, yeah Lionel, come on up. Yeah, I've been unmuting him, but he's not responding. Oh, Lionel. okay, then. All right. Okay. If you snooze, you lose. Going once, going twice, Lionel. <laughs> I'm gonna lower your hand. One. Lower your hand. Sorry, Lionel. All right. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Dominic, you introduced me to Miguel, and actually, the, it wasn't that, that Fat Man Scoop but, he introduced. How did that work out? Yes. So Fat Man Scoop was like, I, I was like, Yo, Scoop, do you know any Latin DJs? He's like, man, Miguel Mix. Go talk to Miguel Mix. You know what I'm saying? And then <laughs> all caps <laughs> in that like Fat Man Scoop, all caps, bold font 700 or size 700 font anyway yeah so i reached out to miguel and i said yo dude just let him know about crate hackers and scoop was involved and that started the conversation so thank you scoop but yeah man i i just we have been talking a long time we're now at officially at 5200 members in crate hackers which is something beyond our wildest dreams and to the next kind of expansion phase for crate hackers is to go global baby and the only way to do that is to bring on amazing personalities like miguel like cb who in the uk and who knows right whatever new territory we got to find people that are open-minded and have that hustle mentality have that community mentality and so 
We're honored to know Miguel. But Thank you, Miguel. Brand new curator. Let's go. Taking over the globe. The president of Latin America. <laughs> Happy hacking, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Miguel, I'll, I'll shoot you a DM. Take care, everyone. Bye, y'all.